and the question is to explain why if you have a polynomial of odd degree using ideas from calculus that it must have an x-intercept someplace. So let's, for the sake of argument, let's take a look at case one where a sub n is greater than zero. Then we know that the limit as uh, x goes to uh, plus infinity of f of x, well this will take the behavior of the leading coefficient and that's equal to plus infinity. And also we have that the limit as x goes to negative infinity f of x that's equal to negative infinity. Okay, now what does it mean for the limit as x goes to infinity to be equal to infinity? That means that if you take x large enough, then you can make f of x bigger than any number you want. So let's just pick a, nu just pick a, a number like 1. So, so there exists a capital L so that uh, x bigger than or equal to L implies that f of x is greater than or equal to, and let me just conveniently just pick any, any positive number, let's pick just one. Okay, so if x, when x is large enough, then f of x is guaranteed to always be greater than or equal to any number you want, and I'll just pick one for this, just to pick a positive number. And also on this side, there exists another um, large, possibly, a negative uh, in, uh, real number, m, so that if x is less than or equal to m, that implies that f of x is less than or equal to negative 1. So that's what it means to have a limit that is negative infinity, that if I pick any number here I want, then if I take x large enough, if x is large and negative, then f of x is guaranteed to be less than or equal to that number. Okay, so by the intermediate value theorem, because f is continuous, we can apply the intermediate value theorem so there exists a number c somewhere between m and l so that f of x is e f of c pardon me is equal to 0 okay so the picture of the graph it looks like this you have it blows up negative this way it blows up positive this way it's continuous so somewhere in between it must cross the x axis that's the idea of the proof um, and the the um, what we did here formally is if I put negative 1 here and positive 1 here, then I'm guaranteed that if I mark these thresholds, there's going to be some value uh, m on this side, so that no matter what, the graph of f of x is always going to be lower than minus m, and there's going to be some l over here that guarantees that f of x is bigger than positive 1. So somewhere between m, m and l, there's got to be a some point in between where the graph crosses the x-axis because zero is between negative one and positive one. So that's the intermediate value theorem. Um, this is the proof if a sub n is greater than zero and very much the same proof works if the leading coefficient is less than zero. So that is the proof for uh, problem 3a.